Last week, we created some multi time frame signals on Strategy Builder to be automated with the Predator X order entry. Since then, I've had quite a few requests to create a standalone trading bot on Strategy Builder with the same concept using these multi time frame signals. So, that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. For today's example, we're going to be using the MACD, and it's going to be very similar as last week's. We're going to be looking at the one minute, the five minute, and the 15 minute. Once all three signals combine, we're going to get one entry signal and then our trading bot is going to take a trade on this signal. So all we're looking at is when the lines cross above or below, or better yet, when the diff goes above zero or below zero, it's just going to make it a little bit easier. So when all three time frames are in alignment, that's when we get our entry signal. In this video, unlike last week's where we focused mainly on building the signals for the predator, this video is going to focus mainly on just a standalone bot. But don't worry, if you do want to automate this with the Predator, the final product, once I export it, it will have these same signals as well. But just for the sake of time, I'm not going to go over how to build actual signals. In this video, we're going to focus on the actual standalone bot itself. If you want a video of how to build multi time frame signals for the Predator, watch this video from last week. I'm going to link it right here. That's going to go over that in a lot more detail. And one last thing, I have not tested this yet. I'm building this for the very first time as a user request. So this is likely not going to be profitable. Just use this as an example or do your own testing before going live. But with that, let's move on to Strategy Builder. All right, Strategy Builder. To get started, you just go to your control panel select new and select strategy builder. From here, you're going to go to a new strategy and we're going to name this anything that we want. Uh, let's do MTF MACD and just select next. Your calculate method, this is how often your strategy is going to make calculations. So for example, on bar close just means anything that you type in for your settings, any conditions and actions, are only going to calculate once a bar closes. Because we're working with multi time frames, this is what I recommend. It's going to keep things a little bit easier. Once we have that, for this example, I'm going to do two profit targets. So all we have to do in this page, go to more properties, go to the entries per direction, and we're going to change this to two. This is not how many contracts you can buy. This is how many separate entries you can go in at the same time. So in order to have multiple profit targets, we're going to treat it as two individual orders with their own stop and their own profit targets. Don't worry, I'm gonna go over how that works. But once we select that, go to next. Now your additional data, this is where we define the timeframes that we're looking at. So we go to add. And I suggest using the primary instrument. That's just whatever you have this loaded on. That's what it's going to use. And for this example, we are looking at the one minute. And then we have to do that for each time frame that we're looking at. So it's going to be the one, the five, and the 15 minute. Once we have that, we can move on to the next page. Your inputs and variables, these are going to be containers that store information so that we can use it at a later point. Your inputs are going to store information that the user can actually modify right within the properties. So what we're going to type in here is things like your position size, your profit targets, uh, your stop loss, things you want to easily customize right within the properties. This is where you put that in. So. Let me start off because we're working with two profit targets. I'm going to say quantity one and I'll leave that one as one. And then we're doing another one, quantity two. And this one I'll make default two just so we can see the difference. Next, we need our profit targets. So profit one. So I'm just going to do a take base profit target. It's going to keep things a little bit easier. So I'm just doing 100 ticks for the first profit. And then profit number two, let's, let's do 250 ticks. And then we're going to define our stop. And because both of our entries are going to be using the same stop loss, we only have to define this one once. So stop loss, the defaults, let's put this one, let's do 200. So once we have that, let's move down to the variables. And these are going to be similar. They are also containers that store information but these keep getting updated as your strategy progresses. 
the user is not going to have direct access to modify these. These are going to be very important for things like switches. So an example of that would be once all three MACDs are in alignment, you're going to want something that's going to switch that condition to true. But once one of the MACDs in any time frame that we're looking at is in the wrong direction, we want something to switch it so it turns it off. Again, don't worry, we're going to go over that and how that works. But for now, we're going to do two bools. So first one is long on, and this is going to be a bool, and we're going to turn this false. And we're going to do the same, but for our shorts. So bool and false. All right, once we have that, let's hit next. And conditions and actions, this is where we actually build out our conditions. So here in set number one, we're going to define when our long conditions are true. So what I like to make sure up here in the conditions page, go to add, we're going to go to user variables. We want to make sure the long on is equals to misc false. So only when our long conditions are currently false, only then can we start looking for an actual long condition. So from here, we're going to add in our actual long condition on all three timeframes. And what I'd like to do is create a group. In this group, I'm going to call it long condition. It can be whatever you want, but that's what I like to call it. Just make sure that for set number one, you have if all selected. So only when all three are in alignment is our condition going to turn true. So from here, just add. We're going to go to indicator and scroll down to the MACD. Your input series, we are going to change this, go to the data series, and we're going to start off with the one minute. And we're going to change this to the diff just to make it a little bit easier. And we're going to say when it is greater than misc numeric value and zero. And we just have to do that for the five and the 15 as well. So go to find the MACD, the input series. We're going to change this one to the five minute. And make sure we also change the value plot to the diff. And it's going to have to be greater then misc numeric value zero. And now we just got to do the same thing, but for the 15. So MACD input series 15 minutes. We're going to change the value and greater misc numeric value zero. Perfect. All right, once we have that, let's create our order. So we're going to go to the lower section and we're just going to create our entry order. So order management, enter a long position. The quantity is going to be our user input, quantity one. The signal name, this is very important. We're going to have to match this up later on. So make it something easy, but also unique. So I like to just do entry one. And the reason I call it entry one is because we're using two profit targets. So we're going to have to submit two separate entry orders. So entry one, and now we're going to do the exact same thing, enter long position. This one is going to be quantity number two. And this one, we will call it entry two. And the last thing that we need here is we must turn our Boolean to true. So go to add, misc and set long on, and we're going to check mark this. So once this is true, because we need it to be false, it's no longer going to keep looking for a new entry. So it's no longer going to keep resubmitting orders over and over. But from here, we do need a way to turn this off. So let's make a copy and we're going to set number two. And in set number two, all we're doing is I'm going to delete these enter longs and then I'm going to come up here to the top. So we're only looking for set number two once our original conditions in set number one are true. So once this is true, 
we start looking at set number two in order to turn it back to false. So I'm just going to switch my condition, my bool, and I'm going to switch this to true. So I am looking for the bool to be true. And then I'm going to go into my group and I'm going to switch this to if any. And then I'm going to go into each one and I'm going to switch each one of these to less. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because if any MACD in any time frame, that's the 1, the 5, or the 15, go below 0, if any of them do that, then it's going to turn our condition back to false. So we come down here and we're going to uncheck this. So now, once this is false, it's going to start looking for our long condition again. So that's all it is. It's just a switch that's going to turn between set number one and set number two. And now we just have to do the same thing, but for the short side. So I'm just going to make a copy of set number two. So here in set number three, for the start of our shorts, I'm just going to switch everything over. So the long on, I'm changing to short on. And in order to start looking for a short condition, our short bool must be false. Then let's go into our group and I'm going to rename this one so we don't get confused. And because all of these, the MACD must be below zero, I'm just going to change this to if all. This just means that all three must be below zero before our condition is true. Again, just make sure set number three, if all. And then I'm going to change this bool. So set short on. This is going to turn our condition true. And once we turn that true, we just have to add our short entry orders. So just go to add, order management, enter a short position. Our quantity is going to be the same as our longs, just the quantity one. Our signal name, this can be the same thing as well. So entry one, add, order management, enter short position. This one is quantity two. And our signal name is going to be entry two. And the same thing, if we turn our short on, we must turn it off whenever any of the conditions are no longer true. So we're just going to make one last copy. So here on set number four, in order to turn it off, we must make sure our short bool is already true. Then as soon as any of these MACDs cross back above zero, then it's going to turn our short condition off. So just change all of these back to greater. But don't forget, we just need any one of these to go back above zero. We don't need all three when we're turning it off. We just need one of them. So we're going to change this to if any. And we're going to turn our bool. This is going to turn our short condition off. So just unselect that. That's all we need. Let's move on to the stop and profit page. And this is going to help us manage our trade. So here, I'm just going to start off. I'm just going to do a simple parabolic trail stop. So as the price keeps moving in our direction, this is just automatically going to trail that stop. So I'm just going to change this to ticks. We're going to use value, user input, and we're using that stop loss input. And that way the user can customize it. They can move it farther. They can tighten it up whatever they want is going to make it a lot easier to modify. But that's all we need to set up a trail stop. And just one thing to keep in mind, guys, if you are using a trail stop, don't use a stop loss as well. This is going to cause it to not submit that stop. Just make sure you use one or the other. They're going to work very similar. So once we have that, let's just add our profit targets. So just go to add and we're just adding the profit target. And remember, we need that entry signal. So make sure this matches exactly how we had it 
in our order. So entry one, I'm just changing that to ticks. And user input, we are doing profit one. And we just have to do that for our second profit as well. So profit target, entry two, go to ticks, user input and profit number two. And once we have that, let's just hit that compile button and that should be everything that we need for our multi time frame bot. All right, so here I have our charts pulled up. I'm going to load this on the one minute. I also have the five minute and the 15 minute. You don't need to have all of these charts in order for your multi time frame bot to work. But I do just have them just as a visual, just to make sure everything is working properly. So let's load up our strategy. Just right click on your chart go to strategies and we're going to find the multi time frame MACD and here you can customize your order quantity your profit target ticks or your stop loss just like we defined I think I'm going to keep everything just the same and let's just go into it and in the strategies tab just select that enable button and we don't see any traits let's scroll back a little bit oh there we go all right, so just like I said, I have not tested this before. This was just sent in as a user request, so I am seeing this for the first time. Okay, so here at 20.53, 8.53 p.m., so let's go over here, make sure all of these were in alignment. So right here, this was below zero, so that's all good. And if we go over here to our 15 minute, this one looks like it was also below zero. So when this one MACD crossed below zero, that's when we entered that trade. And let's come up over here. So same thing up here. This was at 2027, perfect. So it looks like maybe there was a crossover on the five minute and this one was below zero the whole time. So perfect. Let's see. So here, this one might be a good example. On the one minute, it was already below zero. So that is at 1926. So let's go over here. On the five minute, it looks like we had our crossover. And then in the 15, it was always below. So on the five minute, that was the last one we needed. When it crossed below zero, all three different time frames were below zero at that time. And that's when we entered our trade with our two profit targets. So all of that seems to be working. I'm just going to run it on the playback and just make sure it's actually taking trades while running this. All right, perfect. So here we actually had one right away. So it looks like the MACD just crossed below zero. That's down here on the one minute. And because the five minute and 15 minute were already below zero, it entered that trade. So, so as the price moves up or moves down, it automatically trails. And then over here, same thing, another crossover on the MACD below zero, but the five and 15 are already below. Let me slow that down so we don't miss anymore. But here, this one, our MACD was above zero. And then it looked like, when was that, 115? So this one already, our MACD on the five was above zero, but on the 15, that's when we had our crossover. So all three were in alignment to the long side. It enters a long trade. And we'll see if we can get one more, but I think we all kind of get how this works. It just needs all three to be in the same direction. All right, perfect. So here. Looks like we're getting a crossover here. Looks like we got a crossover here. So again, all three in alignment in the same direction, all three time frames. So it enters our trade just like we defined. So I'm going to cut the video here in order to not make this too long, but I hope you guys found this video useful. I am going to post a predator version with signals for those that want to use that with the predator, but all downloads will be on my website or on discord. But I hope you guys found this video useful. As always, take care. Enjoy.